Economics is, in one sense, the study of human behaviour. Economists try to make sense of what people do and why they do it, and to use that understanding to make sensible economic predictions that can help us make better decisions as individuals, corporations and nations. That's why at the beginning of this course on economics, we'll start with that fundamental of human urges to want. Economists suggest that people in all societies have limitless wants. Everybody would like more. More clothing, food, health care, travel, entertainment and so on. But the resources needed to fulfil these wants are limited, so we have a scarcity problem. Any society has resources of land, labour and capital, which can be used to make goods and services though no two societies have the same productive capacity. And no society has ever been able to produce such an abundance of these goods and services that all of its citizens feel satisfied with what they have. And this is what we mean by scarcity. Scarcity is the root of all economics. It requires us as individuals, companies and societies to make choices about what to produce, what to consume, how to use our time, and so on. Every concept in economics flows from the idea of scarcity, including the first concept we discover in this series, opportunity cost. As individuals, we have limited resources. Our leisure time is limited, and so is the cash in our wallet. You may choose to ski. This choice comes with a cost. Coming here is kind of expensive, especially for students. Especially all the equipment is like really expensive. I mean, skiing is like one of the most expensive sports uh, you can do. The cost to you of a ski vacation is not only the cost of lift tickets, equipment, lodging, and transportation but also the cost of lost opportunities to do something else. What are you not doing back at home that you could be doing if you were? Uh, well, my parents would like me to be going to university. <laughs> Either watching cartoons or ideally studying. <laughs> oh, you mean the opportunity costs? I could have been, uh, I could have stayed at home and uh, did uh, my homework or study a lot, but could have gone mountain biking instead. I should probably be in college right now, but I'm, I'm uh, on an extended study break. Opportunity cost applies to all decisions we make, not just leisure. It applies to work and careers. You might choose to be a hotel manager, a robotics engineer, or a blacksmith. Choosing one career path often means giving up another. Limited resources and infinite wants force us to choose, and each choice has an opportunity cost. If resources are allocated to the production of, say, clothing, they're not free to be used for food. Opportunity cost is what we have to give up as a society in order to produce whichever particular good we've chosen. Any output, therefore, has an opportunity cost. We've established that output has an opportunity cost. If we use resources for one form of production, we can't use it for something else. But now let's understand that there is an increasing opportunity cost of production. Economists like to use guns and butter as an example because they're very different products requiring different forms of capital, labour and resources. Iron Ridge Guns in Longmont, Colorado produces specialised gun components. We've designed this for SWAT application, the SWAT sniper a military. Uh, we make a version, the same version in a hunting version with a, uh, uh, a reduced magazine capacity a different stock on here and a longer barrel. The custom lowers that we manufacture, these are um, 
one piece aluminum block. Extra heavy duty construction on the sidewall just makes it very durable, takes an extreme amount of punishment on the lugs and in the magazine well. Here's one with the, uh, the same firearm with a collapsible stock on it. And then here you have one with a fixed stock. The manufacture of guns requires engineering and machining skills, capital investment in computerized machining equipment, and scarce resources such as metal alloys. Dairy farming in Iceland also requires capital, labor, and resources. These are very different from those used in gun production. Most of the farms in Iceland are a bit of uh, around the family. Uh, the typical farm today is about 35, 40 cows. Dairy farmers do not have the skills, equipment, and resources to make guns, just as gunsmiths lack the skills, land, cows, and milking machines necessary to make butter. And then let's imagine that we've got a society in which we're only producing butter and we're not producing any guns at all. Now let's suppose society says, well, we would like some guns. Now there's an opportunity cost. The cost of the guns is the loss of butter production. But how big is the loss of butter production? The answer is it depends how much guns we're producing. If you start switching resources, from a situation in which there are no resources producing guns, it's actually not very expensive. You simply take gunsmiths out of butter production where they're not very good, and you put them in the gun shop, and you get a lot of guns for a relatively small loss of butter production. But if you go on increasing output of guns and decreasing output of butter, Eventually, the resources that you are switching into gun production are resources less and less well suited to it. So in the extreme, if we're producing mainly guns and not much butter, and we now decide to produce even more guns, the only resources we've got left to switch into gun production are cows, and cows are really rather good at butter production, but not very good at gun production. So not only is there an opportunity cost of guns, there's an increasing opportunity cost. And that's a general principle for any form of output that we might think about. It's always possible to produce more output, but it may well only be possible at an increasing opportunity cost.